from WROC. This is News 8 at 6. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Mother Nature opened up the floodgates this afternoon with heavy rain, lightning and wind. And those storms did cause some damage. Ashley Zilka went to some of the hardest hit areas. She joins us now from Culver Road in Rochester. Ashley. Tina, it looks nice out now, but that was not the case a few hours ago. Let's take a look at this tree behind me. We're here at Culver Road Armory, like you said, and the tree fell right into the parking lot, knocking out a light pole. But trees weren't the only problem. The downpour of rain left parts of 490 flooded. Crews had to work under the Penfield Road Bridge to stop the flooding. On Canterbury Road near Park Avenue, one tree fell and covered the entire yard of the house. Emily says she was taking a friend home from the Park Avenue Festival when she saw the storm damage. It looks like it's an old tree if you get closer to it. Um, ripped up from the roots and I'm really happy I don't live right here because <laughs> I would be really scared. I was in my office and uh, all of a sudden the table, a table lamp blew right off the, off the desk and blew onto the floor and broke into a million pieces. Then I heard a tree in my yard snap and the whole top of it snapped off. And while you're out there in the rain picking up branches and trying to do stuff and call the, the uh, tree people, I looked over the expressway wall to see what other damage was. And my neighbor's yard is this one and then this one over here at the, at the armory. Now, I spoke to an officer earlier during the actual storm. He says the flooding on 490 also caused a number of accidents. Reporting live in Rochester, Ashley Zoka, News 8. All right, Ashley, thank you so much. Several thousand customers remain without power right now due to those storms. RG&E is reporting that 6,313 people are in the dark right now. A majority of those outages, about 2,800 customers are in the Chai Lai area. Those outages started between 2 and 4 o'clock, following the line of storms as it moved from west to east. Probably a lot of the smaller ones were a tree limb with wire contact, um, high winds, uh, the rain. Again, a few uh, wires have come down, uh, things that are typically happen with thunder and lightning storms. Meyer added extra crews were called in to get that power back on as soon as possible. No time when that power will be restored just yet. We want to share with you some photos of the storm damage from earlier today. Now our first picture comes from Tia Wolfert in Ontario. You can see a wall of rain there in her backyard. Rick Garvia sent us this picture from Spencerport. You can see all of the rain on that picnic bench there. And the chair also getting wet there in his backyard. And Rebecca Etlinger sent us this photo of a tree down on French Road. This is in Pittsford between Monroe Avenue and Clover Street. Storms certainly strong this afternoon. We want to see your storm pictures. You can just send an email to newsroom at rochesterhomepage.net and we may even share some of those photos on air. Switching gears now to bring you up to speed. Two men are dead after an early morning head-on collision between a motorcycle and a car on Route 390. Deputies say the driver of the car was going the wrong way on the highway. Sierra Putman's been following this story all day long. She just spoke to the family of that motorcycle driver. Sierra? Well, Tina, I just got off the phone with the mother of Dan Bell. Deputies say the driver of a car going the wrong way hit him early this morning on Route 390 and Kendrick Road. 39-year-old Dan Bell lived in Rochester. His mother, Carol Taylor, says he lived to ride and was out with his mo on his motorcycle with friends when he was hit. Taylor says her son was a father of eight, six biological, and two step children. She says her son was a loving, caring, and passionate man who loved his children. This is the location on Route 390 at Kendrick Road where the accident occurred at about 1 a.m. Sheriff's deputy say 36-year-old Alphonse Chimera of Henrietta was driving his car southbound in the northbound lane of 390 when he crashed into Bell. Both men died on the scene. Now, as well as his children, Bell also leaves behind a wife, sister, and his mother and father. The family plans to start planning funeral arrangements later this week. Reporting live in the newsroom, Sierra Putman, News 8. Tragic story. Thank you, Sierra. Two men from Ontario County are under arrest tonight after two separate domestic dispute incidents. Deputies arrested Brandon Perry from Stanley. He's been charged with harassment, unlawful imprisonment, and criminal mischief. Deputies say he held a woman down at a home in Canandaigua and then covered her nose, mouth, and throat. Authorities say he also threw a cell phone that prevented the woman from calling 911. And a second person was arrested in Wayne County on similar charges. 32-year-old James Agostino from Canandaigua is accused of threatening his girlfriend with a knife and cutting her arm in the town of Galen. He's also accused of punching his sister in the face when she tried to intervene. 
Deputies say he also tried to knock out a window in one of their patrol cars. We have breaking news to tell you about out of Wisconsin now, where police say a gunman opened fire at a Sikh temple. At least seven people, including the suspect, are dead. Randall Pinkston has the very latest. Police are blocking the entrance to a Sikh temple outside Milwaukee, Wisconsin, after a gunman allegedly killed at least six people. Investigators say the suspect is also dead, killed in a shootout with police. Our officer, a 20-year veteran, was ambushed, shot multiple times, and another officer who was on scene was engaged by the suspect. Our officer did engage that individual, and that individual is deceased. Police received the first 911 calls around 1030 about a shooting at the Sikh temple in Oak Creek. Several law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, responded. We're treating this as a domestic terrorist type incident, and therefore the FBI has the resources needed to help investigate that. After the shootout with the police officer, four bodies were inside the temple, three others outside. Several other people were wounded, including this man's uncle. He says the shooting happened before many worshipers arrived for Sunday services. If this had happened, you know, an hour or two later, God knows how many people would be hurt or dead. Many members of the temple gathered outside waiting to hear information about what happened. Some say people who were inside the building hid in rooms to escape the gunfire. My mom called my cousin and she whispered to her saying that there's a shooting, don't come. She said that her and um, 15 others locked themselves in a pantry. Police say it appears there was only one gunman. They have not released any details about what may have led to the shooting. Randall Pinkston, CBS News. Police tell us the wounded officer is now at a local hospital in surgery. President Obama made a statement on the tragedy today saying he is deeply saddened and his administration will offer any support they need. Well, today's storms are good news for farmers dealing with drought conditions. All of that dry weather had farmers at Grow More Farms working twice as hard to make sure they had enough corn for their annual sweet corn festival. Visitors had a chance to taste three different types of corn today. Cameo, Montauk, and a super sweet corn that doesn't have a name yet. The reason drought made it so farmers had to irrigate irrigate more this year to get that corn up to snuff, so they were happy to see there was plenty of corn to go around. Oh, it's always nice to see people enjoy a good crop that you've worked so hard of really trying to grow and put your best quality into it. At the end of the tasting today, visitors got to vote on their favorite corn. The results will decide which strains of corn the farm will grow next year. Hundreds ran for cover this afternoon when the skies opened up over the Park Avenue Fest. The Bronx Bombers look to blast past the Mariners. Highlights from Yankee Stadium are ahead in sports. Obviously a wild weather day. Before the storms rolled through, it was warm though. Check out the numbers on the Almanac. 87 degrees, four-year high, and look at the rain. Over an inch and a half at the airport. Where does that put us in terms of the drought and totals? I'll let you know coming up. You're watching the team you can trust. Tina Shively, Rochester's most accurate forecast from meteorologist Stacy Pengen at Sports with Thad Brown. This is News 8 at 6.
News 8 at 6 continues. Rochester's Park Avenue Festival wrapped up for another year today and an event not on the schedule, the severe weather. We did get some pictures of some of the heavy rain and some minor tree damage in the area because of today's storms. You can see all those branches down in the street and a couple brave people still walking around there. Festival organizers say after a weekend of first very warm and then very wet weather, they're still happy with the turnout. I think maybe it slowed, slowed the attendance down a little bit yesterday. Uh, when it gets into the 90s, people just slow down. And I think it affected some of the food vendors yesterday. Uh, but the artists were happy with their sales. Festival organizers also worked with Rochester police this year to crack down on late night noise and parties that typically follow the festival. Time now to check in with Stacy. Are we pretty much done with today's wet weather or not? Yeah, you know, we are. The severe weather came during Park Ave Festival, but eh, a few storms aren't going to keep people away from the Park Ave Festival. Yes, we are, for the most part, done with any uh, storms out there. Still an isolated shower or two, but let's talk about the rain coming up after the break. Meteorologist Stacy Pinchin with Rochester's most accurate forecast. To say that today was a stormy, soaked Sunday, well, that's pretty much an understatement. We had some obviously severe thunderstorms rolling through the area during the early afternoon. This is all thanks to a cold front that is just set to move through. This is all out ahead of a cold front, drier air moving in back behind it, and also some sun. We are still not quite done with at least the threat of a shower, maybe just a little storm, but we are, are done with the severe threat. Check out all of the storm reports throughout the uh, Northeast. Well, basically New York State and Pennsylvania, 72 storm reports and uh, most of this coming in the form of wind damage. And we know all about wind damage here. We got a lot of those reports uh, in Rochester and Western New York during the day today. Puddle Ducky, let's talk about the rain. Along with those severe storms came a lot of rain, at least in some spots, over an inch and a half here in Rochester. This is a record for the day. Dansville, though, only getting a little over a quarter of an inch. Penyan, barely getting anything. And check out Watertown, over two inches. So location was everything. And this one storm basically rode right along the Lake Ontario shoreline 
giving us quite a bit of rain, at least at the airport. So where does that put us in terms of numbers? Believe it or not, we are caught up, and for the summer months, we're almost an inch above average now for rainfall. So far for the month of August, well, we got it all today, 1.65 inches, and since January 1st, about 20 inches of uh, precipitation. So things are looking a lot better, and so will your lawns in a just a short time here. Storm Doppler radar is much, much quieter. In fact, really hardly anything showing up right now. Just a little pocket out here in Lockport, and that is about it. Temperatures tomorrow are going to be significantly cooler than today. A much cooler air mass moving in back behind all of these storms that are rushing off to the east. We'll find a clearing sky as we head into the overnight, setting the stage for a gorgeous Monday and another gorgeous Tuesday as well. So we're settling things down now and we're going to enjoy some nicer weather. Heading into the overnight, we'll find a clearing sky, maybe another stray shower or an isolated storm, but nothing severe. It'll be much cooler. Temperatures falling down into the uh, lower 60s by tomorrow morning. Most of your Monday will actually be spent in the 70s. I think our high temperature is going to top out in the upper 70s with a few of those puffy midday clouds, and then we'll see bright sun to end the day. Tuesday, kind of the same deal, but we'll just stick with the sun all day, low 80s. Wednesday, most of the day stays dry, a little warmer, just a late day shower or storm as possible. And then Thursday, Friday, looking a little unsettled at this point, so we could be adding on to our rainfall totals. Exciting. You know, most years we say, it's about time the sun came back, but this year we haven't had hardly any rain. We've so. had a lot of sun yeah. and not a lot of rain, so it's nice to say, hey, Bring the rain back. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Stacey. Yep. Well, sports is up next with the Yankees, Red Sox, Mets, and Red Wings all in action this afternoon. Plus, we take a look at the Bills' first two weeks of camp at St. John Fisher. Who looked good and who hasn't? Prescott Rossi has the answers next. the wrong time. Was hey, what's going on? Boring.
Now, News 8 Sports with Prescott Rossi. A very hot day for baseball in the Bronx, huh? Yes, absolutely, and a kind of affected play. They seemed a little lethargic out there, kind of slow. Nobody wants to move fast no. on a day like today. And getaway days are always tough to get through when baseball reaches the dog days of August. This afternoon, the Yankees and Mariners wrapping up their weekend series before both hit the road. 1-1 one, one game in the second inning. We start with Curtis Granderson at the plate. Drives one, well... Should have been caught in the infield, but it goes through Dustin Ackley's legs. Heat and humidity slowing everyone down. Derek Jeter scores. Yanks in front 2-1. 3-2 Yankees in the fifth. Raul Abanez unloads on one to right center. Over the bullpen. Solo blast for Abanez, his 15th of the year. 4-2 Yankees. More Abanez in the sixth inning. Bases loaded. Drops a single in the left field. Two more runs come in. The Yankees take the rubber game of the series. 6-2 the final over the Mariners. The Red Sox hoping to avoid a four-game sweep at Fenway Park against the lowly Minnesota Twins. 2-1 Sox in the fifth. Adrian Gonzalez, he's slowly having a nice season. He's turning it around. Two-run blast into the monster seats. 4-1 Boston. It was 6-1 Red Sox in the ninth. The Twins start a rally. Vicente Padilla gives up a home run to Ryan Domit. Second home run Padilla gave up in the inning. That made it 6-4 Boston. Out comes Padilla. Then in comes Alfredo Asemis. He closes the door. The Red Sox avoid the sweep despite the bullpen's best efforts. Sox take the finale 6-4 from Fenway Park. Two scores to report this afternoon. Mets trail the Padres right now 6-3 in the eighth inning against San Diego. The Mets pitchers have already given up three home runs. Mets trying to get back to 500. And the Red Wings in Toledo tonight. They already lead 1-0 in the first inning. Wilkin Ramirez singled in Jamie Johnson in the top of the first. NASCAR wrapping up their weekend at Pocono Raceway with today's Pennsylvania 400. After this weekend, there are only five races until the chase for the championship begins. That includes next Sunday's race at Watkins Glen. Before any of the action could begin, though, rain delaying the start nearly two hours. Once they got things going, we'll fast forward to lap 50. Points leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. Transmission issues forces him into the garage. Little E finished 32nd. Still ahead in the Sprint Cup standings, though. Lap 91 on a restart. Jimmy Johnson gets loose on the inside, slides up into Matt Kenseth. Kenseth then slams into Denny Hamlin. Johnson finished 14th. Kenseth 23rd. Johnson led 44 laps today. Lap 99 with Jeff Gordon leading the rain returns, forces the race to be stopped. It was then called. First win of the year for Jeff Gordon. A huge boost in his race to make the chase. Look at the leaderboard from this afternoon. Gordon, he led only eight laps, but he was in front when it counted. Casey Kane second. Martin Truex Jr. third. Brad Keselowski fourth, and Tony Stewart rounds out the top five. No practice at St. John Fisher for the Bills today. The team given the day off. Only three more days of practice for the Bills until their first preseason game on Thursday against the Washington Redskins. There have been some trends over the first two weeks of camp. The connection between Ryan Fitzpatrick and Stevie Johnson still very strong on the field. Second and third team offenses, though, have struggled mightily. Neither Tyler Thigpen or Vince Young have stood out. As you see Vince Young, a little frustrated with the play there. The defense for the Bills, though, looks especially strong thanks to their new additions of Mike Anderson, Mario Williams, and rookie Stephon Gilmore. All the newcomers have done a good job of stepping in uh, and playing their role and doing what they need to do. It's been... Um, it's been as smooth a transition as you could probably ask for. I think we're all encouraged by what they're doing. You know, um, you know, obviously, the great players have made a lot of plays in the past. Um, add them to our defense, and we're glad to have them. Uh, you know, we're uh, we just talk about building every day, and we still have a long way to go till we get to September, but we're getting there. We're already more than halfway through training camp already. It's already flown by their first preseason game Thursday at home against the Redskins. I have tickets. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah? Ooh, that'll be fun. <laughs> we'll be right back with the final look at your forecast.
News 8 at 6 continues. So any more wet weather tonight? Only a stray shower, maybe an isolated storm, but nothing severe. And uh, just basically a clearing sky as we head into the overnight. Heading into the day on Monday, new work week, much better, upper 70s. All right, Stacey, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us for News 8 at 6. We'll see you back here tonight at 11.